thanks very much for coming. Thanks for being a part of it. Uh, we love what you guys do. We um, support you. I know that we have supported some of the initiatives that you have uh, already done in the kelp forest side of things, and we're exploring some other areas. But um, tell us a little bit more about what you do so people out there know what uh, Sustainable Surf does, and especially um, the sea tree side, which obviously is very involved in this project. Yeah, great. So, um, Chris, um, again, thank you for inviting us to um, be on this um, project. Um, we're, uh, you know, super excited. We're a huge fan of, uh, you know, Chris Burtis, Chris Burtis Foundation, and um, all the crazy things that you do in order to bring um, awareness to, uh, you know, the ocean space, right? So um, we're stoked to be able to come along on this journey with you um, vicariously, <laughs> as I'm not sure I could spend, uh, you know, three or four weeks out in the open ocean, uh, you know, by myself, but um, it's so inspiring to watch you be able to actually do things uh, like this. So um, yeah, so I'm Michael Stewart. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of an environmental nonprofit called Sustainable Surf. Um, we're located right here in uh, California um, and we've been around for um, over a decade now. Um, and what we do is actually pretty simple, Chris. Um, we've been focused on ways to, um, bring the ocean space um, alive, particularly through surfing culture um, and how people interact with the coastline um, and how they play, um, the places where uh, they actually live. Um, and we try to help them live their lives in more sustainable, what we call um, ocean-friendly ways. Um, and in order to help people do that, um, we create programs that are like direct on ramps for them to become inspired, to become educated about issues um, like climate change, like uh, marine plastic pollution, like um, you know the role of of um, the uh, you know coastal ecosystems in protecting our uh, you know shorelines, um, you know how the food that you eat um, really has an impact on the ocean planet um, and the resources that. Uh, we have, right? So um, we've run a number of programs over the years. The one that we're talking with you here about um, is our latest and probably our greatest one, and that's called Sea Trees. Um, and that program is really, really simple. We're out to restore, regenerate, uh, and protect um, coastal ecosystems all around the world. And those ecosystems include places like things you'll be going right past or maybe even flying through on your craft, yep. which are uh, kelp forest, um, mangrove forest, um, coral reefs, seagrass, um, entire coastal watersheds, um, which is where you're going to be departing from both when you leave California, um, where we have yep. projects right in uh, Monterey Bay, and when you arrive at your destination over in uh, Hawaii, where we're also doing coastal watershed projects on the island of uh, Maui. So we're psyched to be sort of at the beginning and at the end of um, your journey here and helping you to literally plant sea trees along the way and to leave that legacy in your wake. Thanks, Mike. I think that's a really great, um, great summary. And uh, yeah, really um, stoked to be part of that journey and also to link it all together. Sometimes connecting all the dots um, isn't that easy. Um, some of it's intentional, some of it's not, but we've made it... Um, work to to sort of tie our way through the, the various different projects and i think you know a lot of people aren't really aware of the impact um of when sea trees sea forest kelp kelp and um mangroves and you know i've been involved with mangroves um plantations all over the world for quite a quite a quite a long time now and um you know i, I know them as the superheroes of of trees that uh, sequest more carbon than any any other tree by far um, they protect the coastlines and what what have you. But tell people, for a lot of people that don't know, um, spe specifically um, mangroves and kelp forests, how much yeah. of a massive difference they make and in what capacity to different coastlines and how they protect them. Because I think that's um, really useful for people to know and, and they're very easy to plant. So it's very easy for people to get involved. Yeah. Um, like you said, you know, these, so kelp forests and, and, uh, you know, mangrove forest, um, you know, those are literally sea trees, right? Um, they're kind of amazing. They're definitely known as the superhero for 
um, not just solving, but actually reversing climate change because they are so much more effective at pulling carbon literally from the air that we've put up there from burning fossil fuels and the way that we live our lives. Um, and being able to pull that back down, put that carbon into their branches and, um, and leaves and roots and actually um, almost like a carbon uh, you know, straw, pull that back down and put it back into the soil also. Um, and they do that um, depending on the type of ecosystem um, and where it's at five to even 10 times more effective than a similar sized um, tropical rainforest actually does, right? Um, and uh, Chris, it's not just the carbon that they actually sequester. It's all the other things that they do along the way, right? By mm -hmm. creating this coastal defense against storms and um, erosion, um, by being the nursery um, for so many important species that live in the water and live out on the reef and have their life cycle basically go between the sea and the coral reefs and the seagrass meadows and back to the mangrove forest, right? So they're in this continual loop here, right? Um, and then of course, um, they're incredibly important for the local communities that actually live in these places because it, you know they're kind of like the Home Depot <clears throat> and the Whole Foods um, for those communities. That's where they, that's their refrigerator, right? That's how they uh, you know, travel around. That's how they actually um, live their lives. So part of what um, these intact mangrove forests and also kelp forests, which we'll talk about as well, um, these are important not just to all the sea animals that uh, you know, live in them, but they're gigantic economic engines for the people who live in that place. So it's about the ocean and it's also about people. That's what connects our work uh, together, right? And, and again, we're in the same relationship with climate change and actually uh, how to solve it um, because people are the ones who've actually um, created the climate, the uh, you know, climate problem the, the that we have right it. now. And these coastal ecosystems can actually help us solve it if we help to, to, um, to um, regenerate them, save them and protect them and put them back to a healthy working state. Yeah, I guess that the best way to describe them is the, like the connection between ocean and earth. And uh, as as we know, they're the only sort of plants and trees that, well, only trees that really can grow with their with their roots in in seawater as well, and really are an amazing barrier from um, really intense uh, storm conditions as well for a lot of the lower lying islands as well. Uh, out all of yeah, the, the you know the the uh, UN Environmental Program, right? Um, which we're partners with. Um, they they essentially estimate that it's a thousand times. Um, more cost effective to actually restore a mangrove forest in these types of areas versus building a, uh, you know, seawall. So it's not just, oh, they actually, you know, store more carbon. These natural systems literally do a better job than the man-made systems that we try to build to help correct the problems, right? Like uh, mm -hmm. seawalls. Um, and they end up doing all this positive stuff as a result versus building the seawall, which actually erodes the coastline faster and causes um, more problems and is incredibly um, expensive to do. Um, re, um, regenerating the health of mangrove forest ecosystems and also kelp forest ecosystems, um, which you haven't really talked about yet, but you'll also be passing through those. Um, yeah. you, you know, you can really kind of think about it this way is that in warm tropical places, it's the mangrove forest that are that um, sea forest right in the transition between land and sea. Like you said, they're amazing plants. They're the only plants in the world that can live in the seawater, right? Saltwater kills most plants. These actually have a super great um, um, adaptation for uh, being able to drink the water and then get the salt um, out of it. Um, kelp forests are like mangrove forests, but it's for cool water, right? So the giant kelp forests um, and the bull kelp forests that are up and down the West Coast um, of the um, United States and Canada and Mexico and go all the way down to South America, down in Chile, they serve that same um, uh, role as sort of the foundational architecture of the coastline. In the same way, 
that a forest provides all the habitat for the animals and the birds and uh, whatever else, these underwater forests are doing the exact same thing. So for instance, the kelp forest project that, that we have in uh, Palos Verdes, which is right in Los Angeles, you're going to be cruising right by there. That kelp forest provides the home for over 750 species um, to actually live there. And it's everything from marine mammals, right? Like, uh, you know, seals um, and, uh, you know, whales um, to, uh, to, uh, you know, sharks and, uh, you know, pinnipeds and crustaceans and like everything else turtles. that actually pretty much everything. Yeah. Right. Pretty turtles. Yeah, exactly. So it's, yeah. yeah. Um, and, um, and kelp forests are actually known to sequester at least as much carbon as, um, mangrove forests do globally. And one of the key things is that, uh, that, um, we're trying to actually change with our partners at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography um, is to help um, really get into the science of just how effective kelp forests are so that we can try to bring these projects um, into the global marketplace for conservation so that the ecosystem services that they provide, right? In the same way that mangroves provide storm protection, kelp forests do the exact same thing, right? Also, yeah. you have um, millions and millions of dollars with uh, fisheries from um, actual fish to, uh, you know, sea urchins to oysters and things like that, that all depend on having these healthy kelp forests. So um, that's the, the projects that we're actually focused on with just those two species. Um, and that probably covers, you know, three quarters, um, of the world in terms of that transition between uh, you know land and sea and it's where most people actually end up spending their time which is another key reason for trying to focus on those ecosystems yeah and i think a really valid and, and good point you brought up as well is that i think a lot of people aren't really aware that you know mangroves don't grow everywhere in the world they only grow in sort of more tropical climates whereas the kelp is sort of the opposite and hence the reason cold and warm um, and the kelp forest you guys can focus on and people can focus on because it's also regenerative for farming. It's great for, you know, for, um, you know, edibles and everything else. There's a lot of uh, medicinal uses for that kind of thing. So not only is it uh, good for the planet, good for good for the ocean, good for, for people, but it's also, again, ecosystems, food, everything else. But you've got the two different worlds that, that are the polar opposites in regarding to where they grow and how they get regenerated. So, Michael, what do you what do you yeah. think in regarding to um, the sort of we, we all know we're dealing with a, the the climate crisis, and everybody always wants to know how they can make a difference. Uh, I think it's really important to always highlight not just highlighting the challenge that we're facing, but what we can do as individuals, as a business, and how we can minimize our impact um, on on the climate and on the environment and on our oceans. Uh, what 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 advice can you give to people out there just to be able to in order to making better decisions each and every day in some small way yeah um you know what um you basically hit it um uh, the nail on the head there with um all the things that you can do to limit the the negative impact that um you're having but i would add to this is that we kind of have to have a narrative shift, Chris, right? Where mm. we're not just thinking about how can I do less bad in the world, but how we can actually do real good at the same time. And yeah. we have to do both of those things, right? So mm. um, all of us can make better decisions in our daily lives um, that when you collectively add all of those decisions up in the day, there's literally millions and billions of these small decisions every single day, right? Um, just take food, right? Um, each of us probably make a decision about the kind of food that we're going to eat, you know, three, maybe four times a day, right? Every single one of those choices, um, if you're thinking about where your food comes from, having it be plant-based, having it um, potentially give back in a positive way um, towards regenerating um, these spaces. Um, if you're making those and as a wider community, all of us start making those small decisions, they collectively add up to the change that we actually need to see. And it can feel like it's, you know, your 
one little part, it can kind of feel like, oh, it's, uh, you know, such a big problem. How can my one action, you know, um, make a difference? Right. Um, it really does when you collectively add these up and the energy and the stoke and sort of the happiness that you bring, um, you know, to that in your life is also, you know, infectious. Like that's what helps to bring other people in to this movement and um, sharing those things that you're actually doing. Um, the decision to like, hey, I'm going to ride my bike and skip this, uh, you know, car journey to, uh, you know, go to school or to go surfing, right? Um, you know, take yeah. an electric bike, right? Um, you know, the kind of surf gear that you get, whether it's a surfboard or um, um, a wetsuit that's made with um, limestone or a plant-based rubber, right? Um, mm -hmm. Or a surfboard that's glass with plant-based resin, right? Um, mm -hmm. All of these are are votes, really, for the type of planet that you actually want to see. Um, so, you know, I won't sit here and say, here's the, the you know list of 50 things that you absolutely have to do. Um, but I would encourage people to actually go to our um, Sustainable Surf site um, and go look at our program called Deep Blue Life, because it really gets to this uh, you know, strategy of, hey, what are the ways that I can think about um, having a stoked, engaged life that does less bad um, and has the opportunity and potential for doing real good when you also connect it to uh, ways that you actually end up giving back, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so on the let's do some real good side of things, right? That's where it gets into saying, great, well, um, how can I give some of um, my time um, for doing, uh, you know, beach cleanups or um, um, attending your, uh, you know, local like Earth Day or World Oceans Day, um, yeah, sort of fair kind of celebration and um, and um, really spending some of your own time um, with others in this positive way to really celebrate the role that the ocean planet. Uh, has in keeping us all, you know, healthy, um, and, and, uh, and intact and the life blood, the life, uh, yeah, the light support system, um, that it actually provides for all of us, for everything that that's on the planet. Um, that is a way of actually, uh, giving back. Um, and then last but not least, if you want to really give back directly, then our sea trees program is a great opportunity to actually do it in the same way that we're helping you um, to plant sea trees for every single mile that um, you're traveling on your journey, right? Um, an individual or a brand that wants to also, you know, help restore kelp forests in California, help plant mangroves in Kenya and in Indonesia or down in Mexico, they can go to the sea trees website, hop on there. It takes about 30 seconds and you can, uh, you know, plant your 10 trees or restore your, um, uh, you know, 10 square feet of, of uh, California kelp forest. When you make that donation to us, we then take that and work with our local partners to actually get the work done on the ground at these spots. Great, Mike. And that, that sort of also is a, a way for, I think a lot of people that, that surf or a lot of people that do sort of ocean sports they travel around the world whether they be on going on holiday or or vacation or whatever they're doing um you know we all have the opportunity when we travel to be able to off offset our our travel carbon footprint and that's a great way to do it um if anybody you know has indeed lots of different ways to do it but there's lots of different ways that people can get involved and i think what is always useful for people to know and understand is how do they what is the quickest easiest way for them to be able to take action and make a difference so yes beach cleanups making the right choices each and every day and uh, and as you said you know it's um having the awareness and having the education so you are informed to be able to make the right decisions with the information that you've got because each and every day we make thousands of decisions that all impact on the world around us and um yeah if you can limit your negative decisions and maximize your your good decisions that help ocean people and planet, then 
and we're setting ourselves up for a win and that multiplied by millions of people around the world really does make a enormous impact so yeah if you have to think of like three things that an individual could do and three things yep. that a business could do what would they be that you would recommend straight off the bat ah uh, you know what um it's kind of funny it's really the same things right when you think about sort of a person you think about a business it's actually the same areas of impact right so um one is um where you get your energy from right um we all get energy for powering our cars, for powering our home. Um, here in uh, Marin, uh, California, where I'm based at, um, one of the easiest things I was able to do since um, um, we rent an apartment here, so we don't own the house. I couldn't put solar panels on this house. But what I did was I went to my local utility, um, and it took me about 30 seconds to sign up um, for their deep green power mix, meaning that if I um, pay, and it's literally about a dollar extra, um, you know, per, uh, you know, sort of billing cycle, um, they will go out and actually source renewable energy from projects in the local area to send that power into the grid <clears throat> to power, uh, you know, my home, right? Um, throughout California and in uh, other places that is like one simple click away you can do and all of a sudden your house the energy that mm. you know it takes to run this computer right now <clears throat> to have uh you know this interview is actually not being powered by fossil fuels it's being powered by um a solar farm that's only about 20 miles away from here right <clears throat> that's mm. quick and that's easy and energy is really how we got into this mess with climate change right because we've been using fossil fuels it's literally you know, taking carbon that was buried by all the forests and the oceans over millions of years, and we've dug it all up almost at Burning the same it. time, right? And we <laughs> put it into it. the atmosphere, God. and that's Crazy. the problem. Like, yeah. climate change is really simple. All we have to yeah. do, well, the way we got to it is we, we took all that carbon and put it back into the atmosphere at one time. Carbon dioxide warms up. It creates the greenhouse effect, right? So mm -hmm. we need to simply pull that back down. Um, and that's where sea trees comes in, but we have to do both at the same time. You have to be using less of that and pulling it out all at the same time, right? So energy is um, the uh, sort of number one thing. If you have a car, you should really be thinking about not using it and riding your bike <laughs> to um, get to the places that you normally go. Most trips are, you know, within a mile or two and you could easily get there. You could bike, bike which is bike, better for your health. Skateboard, scooter, the walk, exactly, the run. right? There's so yeah. many different and, options. Yeah. And you'll be healthier yes. and happier. Healthier and, and happier. Be in better, <laughs> yeah, and be in better shape for yes. surfing or wing foiling, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you can get, you know, electric bikes. You know, we, yeah. So it's, it's um, th those are all the cool things that you can do. If you can swap out your, uh, you know, gas car for a hybrid, you know, that's sort of another step there, right? Um, so the second step really, and this is uh, definitely one of my favorites, is food, right? Where your food comes from, the type of food that you're eating has a huge implication. Um, you know, the globally speaking, Chris, um, the food systems that we have account for about a third of the carbon footprint um, that's generated each year um, on the planet. So thinking about a lot of that, a lot of that is crops or, or, um, the beef industry or what have you, which also has a massive I, effect. And I'm very aware of that. Yeah. It's crazy. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, you are going to be choosing really wisely the kind of food that you're bringing with you. Um, I bet a lot of it is actually going to be, uh, you know, plant-based proteins and mm -hmm. super dense foods that, you know, make that sense. Like your journey is going to depend, I swear to God, on everything mm. else, um, like like taking everything else and all the dangers and challenges and hardships that um, you're going to face. If you didn't bring the right food along for to make your journey, to put gas in your tank or to fill or to charge up um, your battery, you wouldn't be able to actually do this. Now, all of us in the rest of our lives, we don't have that element of, you know, I might die if I don't pick the right kind of food here. Um, but we have this great opportunity to say, you know, 
what kind of meals can I actually make with, uh, with more plants in my life and okay. getting food right. from your local food shed, right? Go to, mm. go to the farmer's market. market, eat lower exactly. on the food chain, figure out how to cook things. So they taste really good. Like all that is, is just, um, incredibly like it makes life way more interesting um, you'll learn more about it. You become more self-sufficient and it's super, super tasty. Right. So, um, and okay. healthier so, for you, healthier for your immune system, healthier for your body. You'll feel better. It's better for your mental capacity yep. and you feel physical, your immune system, everything. So, and better for your yeah, own I community think, too, right? Because, yeah, yeah. because Giving you're back, shopping supporting. more locally there. Like you're spending your money again. It's that vote. It's like, Every time that you spend money or make these choices, you're voting for the kind of world that you want to see. So make those votes count. And, you know, right. don't beat yourself up either, too, if you're like, ah, I, you know, in this one moment, I want to get French fries and a, a you know, shake from somewhere, right? It's like, you know, it's sort of the 80-20 exactly. rule, you know. Give, give a little, give a little. Don't be too exactly, hard. Exactly, yeah. But give yourself a break, too, right? Make decisions each and every day if you can, yes. Mike, exactly I think that's right. a, that's a, that, that's a great summary. I think, um, I think just sort of wrapping things up, I, I know that, um, we don't have um, too much time today, but, um, yep. I think, you know, really great to have you guys involved. And, you know, obviously this whole project is talking about power and talking about how things get generated. This whole project is powered completely by nature for nature. So all, all my systems and me going across is all driven and powered by solar wind and hydropower. Um, so that ties in exactly with what we're saying. And then also very particular, as you said, on the type of um, freeze dried foods and mostly fresh foods that have been compacted and dried um, out. So they're very, very compact and I can take them in small spaces, but making sure that I'm eating really organic, fresh fruit and nuts, which actually are really helpful, which can be compacted down. But I think this journey, as we are talking about and how you guys are involved um, with me leaving for even doing the test run last year where we did the, the the kelp forest in Monterey and now we're going down the Palace Verdes section and the and the Baja section which is going to tie into where we're going to be planting the mangroves for, for the journey to be able to offset this the carbon footprint of, of the journey and then tying into finishing up in, in Oahu which is just um, next to Maui which is where you guys are also doing the work on the watershed um, side of things which is also helping the community do you want to just quickly do a like a one minute segment on on the watershed um, project and how what that is and how we are yeah, helping sure. with that and how it gives back to community yeah, and to nature right exactly so um what's great chris is that your journey is literally passing through so many or passing right by so many of our projects right so it's uh, you know kelp forest it's um, mangrove forest uh, down in baja um, and then it's um coastal watersheds all the way in um, Hawaii, right? So you're passing through and actually passing through and seeing um, um, those spaces. <clears throat> and we're going to be planting sea trees on your behalf in all of those projects. Um, and the newest project that uh, we actually have, like you said, um, is in um, a coastal watershed right on the ocean in uh, Maui. It's a place that um, you know well, which is called Maliko Gulch. Um, that yeah. is sort of the place where everyone takes the jet skis and the boats and then goes out to Jaws to actually surf there, right? Well, yes. um, that safe harbor that's actually provided is because of the watershed and the creek that actually comes down from the top of Haleakala. Um, and in the section that we're focused on, which is basically from the ocean to about uh, sort of three miles back, is one of the most heavily impacted what parts of the watershed that there is. So it's essentially been used and abused over the last hundred years. And lots of things have, have been uh, dumped in there. There's been different types of uh, agriculture, which wasn't uh, sort of great for it. And what we've done is we've actually partnered with uh, regen.org, which is a local nonprofit that has the lease for that entire space. And they've been systematically cleaning it up over the last five to 10 years. And now mm -hmm. that they've done that part, um, we're coming in and helping them to restabilize the stream bank um, that has been bringing sediment down that river, especially when it floods, and out on to the coral reefs. 
which is actually smothering them and killing those coral reefs. So what we're doing is we're using native plants and regenerative plants um, to um, secure the sides of the creek and the river um, and creating abundance and food as a part of actually doing that, right? So some of the plants that we're actually using there are uh, ulu or uh, breadfruit. Coconut is also being grown there. Papaya, um, uh, passion fruit. Like, so it's kind of this great thing where um, Regen has figured out a way to not only do conservation, but to actually do it with plants that are local and native there that also provide food. So um, they actually have a farm stand that is connected with the restoration project that actually sells, you know, coconuts and mangoes and all that kind of stuff um, down there. And everyone can become um, a part of that. And I think you're going to be helping us to restore a thousand square feet of, of that watershed as a part of doing your journey. And I really hope that you can get over to that side of things um, when you're in Hawaii to see it for yourself. Yeah, I really hope so. Thanks very much for that, um, Mike. I think that's a great example of also it's not only just about um, protecting the the environment, but also um, regenerative as well, and also linking back into um, community and diversity and inclusion and giving back to culture. So it really does tie everything nicely together, um, and also including also the non-invasive species or the all the local species, and also. Um, how that also affects that entire little mini ecosystem which goes out into the ocean as well. So I think it's it's a really great segue to to finish off. What we do on land, the whole thing always matters affects everything of in the ocean. What happens in the sea, right? Because a hundred percent correct. Yeah. yeah, and I think it it also is a great example of you know all the solutions in 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 the world are come come from nature, and sometimes we need to listen to nature. The world <laughs> world doesn't need us; we, we need nature more so than anything else. So. Mike, if, if people want to get involved um, and support you guys, like like I'm doing on my journey, they don't have to um, paddle across an ocean or wing fall across an ocean, but they can do no, they don't. Other things. Where do they where do they find you guys um, to support what you do? They can just surf right on over on their web browser um, or their phone to um, to or uh, just Google it. Um, sustainable surf uh, and uh, you know sea trees. Obviously, you can find us on uh, you know social on. Um, Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Um, yeah, come see what's happening. I know that we're going to be posting and sharing your journey along the way as well. And uh, I can't wait to uh, you know see you take off. You're always inspiring. Um, this this trip is going to be um, even bigger um, than the last one. Um, can't wait to see what goes wrong first and how you fix that. <laughs> Don't and, say that. <laughs> oh yeah. To let too many things yeah, go wrong. exactly. Hey, there's, there's right. like, 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 like with 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 the climate crisis. There's always a way to fix it. It's just about having the right mindset and attitude, and being solution driven, and finding a way. And if we all want, if we all think that way about climate and and the environmental crisis we've got around us, and we all take action, the world will be a better place. So let's all do that um, a little bit in some small way each and every day. Thank you so much. Let's leave it there. And um, yeah, safe journeys, brother. I'll see you on the other side. Thanks, Mike.